Hi guys, welcome to another MRCP Paces video. Today we are going to be talking about history taking, how to and how not to, okay? The do's and don'ts of history taking. Now, why are we doing this video? You may think that, you know, we all have done history taking over and over again, hundreds and thousands of times as qualified doctors for years and years, right? Well, it's true. But you, you would be surprised how many of you and your colleagues get this wrong in MRCP paces, okay? I am not, in this video, I'm not going to be teaching you how to take a history, but to specifically avoid what you shouldn't be doing, and in fact, how you can tweak the way you are doing things so that you can optimize it and gain the most out of the history taking station. All right, so we'll go right into it in a minute. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Vishal Kumar. I'm a doctor in the UK. I've done MRCP and I've set up this YouTube channel for your benefit and also my website, keenmedic.com. If you want to find out more about me, check out the YouTube channel or go to my website. Let's get started. There are many pitfalls of um, history taking, as you may not have thought of actually, because as I said earlier, this is perhaps one of the most comfortable stations you might feel in MRCP PACES exam, but that can be in fact deceitful because as easy as the marks can be for you to gain, they can be just as easy for you to lose, okay? History taking, I feel that you have to put in quite a bit of effort in order to get the right information, okay, in the right way. So how can you do this? Let's have a look then. So let's start off in the same order that you would take a history, okay, in, in your station. So first of all would be the presenting complaint. The important thing here is to let the patient talk. You will have about 14 to 15 minutes in your history taking exam in the current format of MRCP PACES. And that is plenty of time for you to get all the right information um, and also communicate effectively. Okay, But in the first couple of minutes, you need to let the patient talk in terms of what they have come, come in with today. Okay. You shouldn't be doing what a lot of people do, which is going for closed questioning too soon. Because what that means is that uh, you are not allowing your patient to communicate in their own words and they will not feel that they are heard. OK, and that will have a knock on effect on your communication skills and that will be bad for you okay uh, the patient will feel that they are not being listened to and also you will miss crucial marks because you won't get all the information from the patient okay so let the patient talk at the start make sure you do that as doctors what can happen is that you can become tunnel visioned okay you can become tunnel visioned and you can focus on the patient's systems uh, you can categorize them as ha having an endocrine problem or a respiratory problem and just hone in on that specific system now whilst it's important for you to do that in order to get the history out you need to remember that the person in front of you is not a bunch of physiological systems or organs. They are a human being like you, like everyone else. They also have a life and they also are a whole person. And so you need what is called a holistic approach. OK, you need to think about what other factors of their lives uh, might be impacted by the complaint that they have come in with. Okay, now, so what are these factors? First of all, day to day activities. And so this is particularly relevant uh, for anyone who is elderly, but it's of course relevant for everyone. Okay, so these can be things like washing, dressing, cleaning, going and getting the shopping, climbing stairs, walking, any and every one of them are under the day-to-day -day activities, okay? And if they are needing help with things like that, especially, as I said, in the elderly, that suggests frailty, okay? Uh, this may be important for things like resuscitation discussions, escalation of treatment plan discussions. 
and also it would also be important in younger patients um, for example if you have a patient with shortness of breath and they have come in with shortness of breath on exertion and they are only about 45 years old you might think about pulmonary fibrosis as being one of the issues or malignancy okay driving is something that a lot of us often forget i often did as well especially at the start of my uh, paces preparation because you don't normally think about driving Driving as a clinical slash medical or a life need okay because it just feels detached doesn't it but it is extremely important because it uh, can have huge safety implications so in patients with uh, conditions such as type 1 diabetes on insulin or type 2 diabetes on insulin um, seizure activity of any kind whether they have got diagnosed epilepsy or it is a first seizure or they have had any kind of neurological symptoms such as weakness or uh, visual disturbances uh, or recent strokes or cardiac symptoms okay these are all very important conditions in uh, having implications with the patient in terms of driving so if you're not sure then always refer to the dvla's latest guidelines which you can look up the next thing of course is work whatever symptoms that they have come in with uh, will have effects on their work this can be uh, this is important because if they are doing manual labor and they have got let's say um, hypoglycemic episodes because of type 1 diabetes then it can be very dangerous so you need to take into account what they are working as so work is important especially also if work actually involves a lot of driving for example hgv or lorry drivers then you need to be extremely careful in what you are advising the patient uh, because if they're having as i said earlier on in patients with um, hypoglycemic episodes then they cannot be working unless um, cleared by dvla okay all right so flying is something that is a bit rarer but this may come up from time to time this is not necessarily something that you need to actively ask but the the patient may well ask you about advice on flying depending on what the situation is okay um, and this is something that you should think about especially in patients with suspected pulmonary embolism so the next thing that is very rarely asked but is actually important is sexual function okay so now i know that um this is this can be a taboo topic but remember you are a doctor you are their doctor and often the condition that they've come in with can be extremely relevant to their sexual function if a man with uncontrolled diabetes on insulin has an h has an hba1c which is through the roof and he is depressed you need to find out why he why he's depressed whether there's something underlying going on it might be because his sexual function has gone down because of uh, erectile dysfunction or you might have a patient a young lady who is having menstrual disturbances and infertility and uh, she's just recently been married um, and they're trying for children but they're not having any luck uh, you need to find out what the underlying condition might be this is all suggestive of course of endocrine issues right so this is why sexual function can um, have direct implications to what they have come in with so this is something you should always keep in mind as well uh, of course this is not always relevant if a patient for example okay comes in with chest pain um, with angina type symptoms um, or they've got palpitations it is unlikely that sexual function is going to be directly relevant so this is something to keep in mind not ask every time okay that's what i'd like you to take away from this so in terms of the drug history i know that a lot of you uh, will have a set way of doing things but i would like to make a suggestion here ask for the prescription or the list of medication okay a lot of your patients will be on more than five some even more than 10 or 15 medications you don't have the time for them to be going through every single one of them verbally okay you don't have the mental capacity to note every Every one of them down you just can't do it so a lot of them in fact in MRCP paces will have their prescription or their list of medication 
Just ask them for it. It will save you so much time, so much time. So this is a top tip that I really recommend that you use this. The next thing is actually something a lot of you will do, which is forget about asking about allergies. So this should go hand in hand with uh, drug history. Every time you ask drug history, it should come out naturally. Do you have any allergies? That should be a standard question that should come along with the drug history. But often this is forgotten, which means that, you know, you you lose those marks. And sometimes what can happen is it can be even more serious. You might end up prescribing medications or suggesting something that they are allergic to. And that is a big, big error. Family history. Now, there isn't much that I would want to say with this because this there isn't much to this. But there is one thing is that if a patient has got cardiac sounding issues, then you need to know what their family history is because obviously this is directly uh, relevant. Or if they've got some malignancy at a young age, then you also need to know what their family history is because they may have some kind of hereditary malignant syndrome. Now, there is a lot to say about social history. The first thing is that you not checking recreational drugs or IV drug use. Now, this is similar to the other um, topic of sexual uh, function. This is extremely important, but is often not asked because of the um, nature of the questioning. Just keep it simple. Just keep it very straightforward and it will be fine. So something along the lines of, uh, I need to check something important with you like i do with all my patients have you ever taken any recreational drugs including intravenous drugs that's it okay keep it nice and simple and straightforward and they will get the point they will answer your question failing to sh check sexual history as earlier this comes time and time again so i i'm just trying to drive home the point and Lastly, but definitely not the least, is travel history. Now, a lot of uh, candidates, what they do is that you just ask, have you been away? Uh, and that's it, okay? Uh, that's that's it that's not but that's not enough you need to be specific in terms of what you're asking them have you been away out of the country in the last six months okay so you, that tells them that they need to think about whether they've been out of the country or not and whether they have been out of the country in the last six months or not okay so be specific in that way in terms of your travel history so that they can provide the right answer but that's not all uh, you need to ask them where they stayed because, for example, if they've come in with some kind of pneumonia type symptoms, it might be legionnaires, okay? It might be legionnaires, so they you need to know where they stayed, what they did, because it could be a tropical infectious disease which they may have picked up from the freshwater swimming or some kind of hepatitis or um, HIV, which may have picked up from getting tattoos or sexual encounters, okay? So you need to know what they did, the activity. And lastly, but definitely not the least, is whether or not they had any vaccinations done before their travel, all right? So just to summarize here, you, in terms of travel history, you need to be specific in what you're asking in terms of the duration, uh, where they went, where they stayed, the activity and vaccinations. Okay, so there's a lot more to travel history than just asking, have you been away? All right. Okay. Now, the other bit, which is absolutely unforgivable in a history taking, like the communication station, is not icing. Okay, so icing is ideas, concerns, expectations. You need to uh, always ask about ideas, concerns and expectations in every single station that you are talking to the patient. So which stations do you talk to the patient in? You talk to them in history taking, communication station and station five. So in all these stations, you have to ice always, always, always. OK, so ice, ice, baby is your mantra, my friend, and you should always be sticking to it. And in some cases, you need to do it more than once if you suspect the patient hasn't given you all the um, all their concerns or all the information that they might have. 
all right you often can lose a lot a lot of marks if you don't do this and you don't do this enough okay you need to also address their concerns it's not good enough just asking what their concerns are and just leaving it and not addressing or providing uh, reasonable solutions to you to their concerns okay and timing of course is uh, absolutely important for every single station including history taking and knowing what your time limits are and keeping to them is very important the only way you can do this is via practice not summarizing after the history taking can be a downfall it is not always a must but it is what it does is that it allows both the patient and your examiner and you to collect the thoughts and see how you have done okay so often what can happen is that the examiners your examiners they are there for entire days sometimes even multiple days or multiple weeks right so they can be really tired and what uh, can happen is that they may not always know how good you are so if you are summarizing back to the patient towards the end of the consultation then this gives the examiner an opportunity to see what you have done and um, give you the appropriate scores. Okay, this is an opportunity for you as well. And not checking the patient's understanding and allowing them the opportunity to ask questions. Okay, so after rising it's good after you've elicited their concerns and addressed them that is very good but you need to check if they understand what the plan is and allowing them to ask questions so you need to uh, just keep it simple it doesn't have to be complicated just say do you have any questions does that make sense okay just like you would with your friend and not providing written information. Of course, you won't necessarily have written information in the exam setting, but just say that you will be providing your patient with written information, leaflets, uh, websites to refer to, things like that, okay? And not providing a follow-up appointment. This may not be always relevant, but in a lot of cases with history taking in particular, this will be relevant. And this will uh, the urgency of it will depend on the type of complaint. Sometimes it will be the following week that you'll follow them up or in two weeks time. Sometimes it may be six months down the line or a year down the line. Okay. Um, it's just it just depends on entirely what they have come in with but this is something that um, that should be provided towards the end if it is required and lastly but definitely not the least my friend not safety netting so safety netting what is it so if a patient has got some kind of complaint and there could be the chance that it could get worse then you need to think about safety netting you need to provide them with the information like the symptoms to look out for and to seek medical attention if this if any of these symptoms occur and seek it appropriately so sometimes it may be really urgent okay so if they have had a head injury for example and uh, they start vomiting but you are going to discharge them okay because there is nothing to do uh, they, they are perfectly fine neurologically they are feeling well in themselves but let's say after being discharged um, the following day of the following uh, two days they start vomiting violently and they start uh, becoming drowsy then you need to uh, make sure that they seek urgent medical advice okay so that that kind of thing so it's, that's what safety netting is to, uh, making sure that you know medical attention is sought appropriately should their symptoms worsen and that's everything guys i hope you found this useful as always make sure you check out paces course online if you want more value and i will be seeing you in the next video